we have seen in a previous video how to create low LOD templates, user-defined features, and how to instantiate those with the component-based design approach. In this video, we will see on the same basic example how to create a high LOD version of the column inside an engineering template that will be linked with low LOD and allow us to change the LOD at any time. This video is still based on the civil engineer role CIENC. We are back in the peer product where we created the simple column UDF. We will store the high LOD information in this same product. First of all, I will create a new geometrical set where I will store some detailing geometry. Let's say I want to add corners to my column. I can either add them in my column profile sketch, which would impact my low LOD version, the UDF. If I want the corners only to be available in the detailed version, I can copy the sketch and paste it as specified in part document. This will then be a copy with the same inputs and will also still be driven by the peer width parameter. Thanks to the auto search, I can automatically select all the profile and apply a corner on each of the sharp angles. This value could also be driven by a formula, but I will keep it simple. Now, let's say that I want to decompose my column into a crosshead, a peer segment, and a pile foundation. I will need to set the position of each element. So I create a plane at the top, which is the horizontal plane of my base axis system. Another one that will be offset to define the base of the crosshead by one meter. This could also be driven by a parameter if need be. And finally, a plane located at the point on the ground. I will now publish those detailing reference geometries and the peer width parameter so that I can reuse those in other parts. Publications allow to manage in a more robust way the outputs of a part so that they can be reused in other components. I mentioned that I wanted to separate my columns into three different objects, so I create first a new part of crosshead type. I activate the 3D part so that a 3D shape is automatically created with IFC parameters in it. To define the geometry of my crosshead, I first project the published detailed profile on the middle plane. I then create a parallel of the top profile of 1 meter toward the exterior. Again, any value could be linked to a formula if need be to be calculated or driven by other parameters. I will do a multi-section surface that will connect both contours, the projected one and the parallel one. Finally, I create the concrete by doing a closed surface in the solid tab. I can now link the IFC parameter net volume through a formula so that it measures the volume of my crosshead concrete in the part body. This will update automatically when the inputs will be changed. Now I will create a second part, a peer segment. The peer segment will be a solid pad of the detailed profile that will go up to the bottom and start at the middle plane just below the crosshead. I link also the IFC parameter net volume to the measure of the part body. Last part to be created is for the foundation of my column, a pile. I will create a basic circular shape centered on the point on the ground that is why I project it in my sketch and set it as construction element because I do not want it to be extruded. I will link my pile radius to half the width of the pier using my pier width parameter. 
I can now create a solid pad of 5 meters here. It could also go to a specific geological layer if I had it available in my session, such as the rock, for example. Lastly, I link also the net volume IFC parameter so that it measures my pile part body. As you can notice, I can display those values using the beam attributes command in Building and Civil Assemblies app. Last thing to do for my 3D design is to publish my base axis system with defined component. This will be the reference used for instantiation with component based design. Engineering templates are similar to UDF. But instead of working with features, it will work with parts and products. I can also add a drawing view of my column that will be linked to the geometry and update at instantiation of the template. So I launch the drafting application. My standards are set up as NC, but you could use ISO or any other standard defined by an administrator. I change the scale of my view so that it fits in my page. and create a basic front view. The view will be linked to the 3D geometry, and I just need to pick a reference plane to define the viewpoint. A preview of the column is visible, and I click in the background to validate it. With page layout, I will instantiate a basic frame and title block. Notice that the title block can automatically be filled. and I will add a couple of dimensions. Now, my detailed column is finished and I can go to Engineering Templates application to create my template. My peer product is at the bottom and I only need to click on the upward row to set the data to be instantiated with my template. All my parts and the drawing are automatically added. Like for the user feature definition, I need to set then the inputs for the template. I click on Add and pick the 3D shape containing those. Same as for the UDF, my two inputs are the base axis system and the point on the ground. Then I pick the parameter that I will be allowed to change at instantiation, here the peer width. My engineering template is set and I can save it. I will do a first manual instantiation test using the data that I stored before in the test UDF geoset. From the Tools tab, toward the right end of it, I need to expand by clicking on the gray row next to Insert New Object to find the Engineering Template Instantiation command. It is then asking me to search the template in the database or select it if it is already open, which is the case. And I need now to set the inputs. I pick the test axis system and the projected point on the ground and I can modify the published parameters inside the Parameters tab. I set the peer width to 5 meters to see clearly the change. My peer template has been instantiated under my root with all its work breakdown structure and has been morphed following my inputs and parameters. My quantities have been automatically updated with the new values. If I change the inputs, let's say I move the point, everything is automatically recomputed. Finally, I will check my drawing, which is requiring an update. When clicking on Update, the 2D view is automatically updated to represent the 3D and all dimensions are also updated. 
As a side note here, you do not have to open each drawing to update the views one by one. They can be updated using an automatic batch. Now, as for the previous tutorial, I do not want to instantiate manually all the peers along my alignment. This is where I will use component-based design. To do this, I will create a new object type of peer type. There are different instantiation methods. The distribution mode we used last time will only copy and paste the UDF into a peer part. Reference mode will copy the reference product at each axis system location, but this will not morph along the alignment. We will then use the adaptive mode so that the engineering template is morphed following the inputs. In the resource table, I define the low LOD version of my peer the feature-based design, here the UDF, as we did in the other tutorial. And then the high LOD version of the peer, the product-based design, which will be my engineering template. I can save the object type. Now I am back to my terrain on alignment. I will capture my component specification and set my newly created object type. It can take a couple of minutes before it's available in the search because it needs to be indexed. I will create a curvilinear pattern with a count of 10. I move the pattern in the area where I need peers. I set the measurement on projected curve and the axis orientation as direction imposed. To automatically generate the point on the ground from the axis system, I will use the projection pattern mode on the terrain. And I will edit the parameters using the selection by specification to define different peer widths. Now I can process and instantiate my low LOD columns. I can iterate in my design and when I'm happy with it, I can use the change LOD command that needs to be launched at the bridge product level. It automatically lists the object types available under the bridge. I select all of them. I want to expose and synchronize the product and I click on process. It can take a couple of minutes, but it will save you so much time. Now, my 10 peers are fully detailed. They have the right size. I can visualize the beam attributes with the volumes. and I can open and update the drawings of each peer. Now, instead of opening all the peers one by one to check the quantities, I can generate a quantity report, a knowledge report. This is fully customizable. Here, I define one providing me with all the volume information, but if necessary, I could get the height and width of each element, the weight, the cost, if I have some information about it, and so on. Reports can be exported in different formats, such as XML, HTML, XLS, TXT. So you have seen with a simple example how easy it is to generate detailed data for your project once you have captured your knowledge into templates. At any times, you can go back to the component specification and change some parameter, position, and you just have to run an update to see the new alternative of your design and you can generate a new report to compare the quantities of the different alternatives. This is really powerful to optimize your design and provide you with the pros and cons between different alternatives really quickly. Of course, the peers can also be exported in IFC for the construction site, for example, or your suppliers. And you will retrieve all the data, the 3D, and the attributes with the volume that were computed.